So I believe that cast iron and carbon steel iron cookware is a very, very best choice for stovetop cooking, for basically for frying. I don't think anything else on the market comes close to giving you the finish and the taste and the ability to create flavor as cast iron can. And definitely it outperforms any type of coated cookware, hands down. But there's a maintenance issue. We need to make sure that we look after our cast iron and carbon steel properly. I'm a big advocate of promoting chain mail. Chain mail, yes, the same stuff that knights used to wear underneath their shining armor. And I believe that this works incredibly well, but I don't know everything. And there are nuances in how this works that I like to learn from other people. So I've invited Stephen Muscarella, the co-founder and co-owner of Field Cast Iron, arguably one of the very best cast iron companies in the world. And he developed his own method of caring for their product and it uses chain mail and also a seasoning paste. So I wanted to talk to him to get a really the understanding of the best way to use chain mail. Is there a good size of the, the loop that we should be using? When do we use it? And when do we use paste? So here is Stephen Muscarella from Field. All right, Stephen, thanks so much for talking to me today. Fantastic, I wanna to get to the bottom of this critical issue for me on chain mail and what it's all about, what's the right size and get the skinny from you, the pan man, Stephen Muscarella of Field. Sounds good. Awesome, man. Right. So <laughs> can you give me a little bit of, of background? So chain mail, you guys have been selling chain mail for, for years. You guys make your own American made chain mail. And yeah. you know, the impetus of this call to you was that you've just changed the, the, the dimension of the circles of your chain mail. Uh, you've gone to something smaller, a tighter, smaller chain mail. Um, but can we back up a little bit? Can you tell me a little bit of what chain mail is and why Field makes it and sells it with their pants? Um, yeah, well, the so what happened at some point was uh, my philosophy as a maker was always kind of, here's a tool, you got to figure out how to use it. The tool is excellent in and of itself, but, you know, it all, it's only so good as the person using the tool. So... Uh, what ended up happening was that enough people were intimidated by the idea of taking that on themselves, and rightfully so, because not everyone has all the time in the world like me to obsess over cast iron cookware. So we, uh, so I, I got to this. Um, actually, the real story, the, the funny story was, um, and this is this comes down to the why I created the field method, um, because uh, I am. I am I mean, to me everything's so second nature because I've been doing this for a decade now. So the I had this epiphany when I was at Home Depot. I think I had just moved into a new apartment and I uh, was walking down the cleaning aisle <clears throat> and I uh, I was like, all right, I need a mop or something. I got to clean these floors. I don't really know much about this. So I just what I don't even know. And I see this product on the shelf that says mop cleaner, and it's just a but just soap in a, in a, it's just soap in a squirt bottle, you know, <laughs> but it said mop cleaner on it. And I was like, great, that solves my problem done. And then I was like, oh, people feel that way about cast iron too, potentially. All right. I'm going to solve their problems for them without it having to get, you know, they won't have to get in the weeds about all this. So that's, um, that's when I got really serious about developing the field method for our company so that we'd have a prescriptive, uh, just a prescriptive way to, to help you get going. Um, so um, what I did was I spent about three months using a chain mail scrubber after every time I cooked um, and using the same oils that I wanted, to, that I thought were good every time, following the method. And by the end of that three months, I looked at my pan and I was like, that is perfect. So I'm like, all right, I've cracked the code. We've got a good process here. Um, and so the, the the original hunch, though, that I was trying to prove was the same thing that we do with our pans in our our, our factory seasoning, which is the um, if you go if you make a really really smooth pan, the the, the coating can't grab can't grab onto it. So 
we take a couple steps to make sure that there's something for the seasoning to hold on to. And that's why field company pans turn black over time. And some of our competitors always have this um, kind of bronze copper color that never, and it's really hard to get them black because they're, you, when they start to build up, a lot of the times that seasoning will get worn off anyway. So, uh, or just won't have anything to adhere to. So under this whole idea about the principles of coatings, it's like, okay, you need, you need a little bit of abrasion, you know, everything. Uh, I mean, at this point, I would hope um, consumers have had enough experience with certain products where it's like, sometimes products come with a little bit of sandpaper and they say, make sure you scuff that up a little bit before you put it on there or something like that. And it's kind of the same idea with seasoning. So um, the chain mail is just one of a wide variety of abrasives that you could look into. And what you're looking for specifically with cast iron is an abrasive that doesn't remove your seasoning, but at the same time still gives a little bit of texture to leaves a little texture behind on the pan. So like you could take 80 grit sandpaper, but you're actually going to remove, you're going to remove stuff. And so, and then you could take say non-scratch uh, scotch bright, and um, then you're actually, you're probably not going to remove much and you're not going to get any abrasion either because it's not scratching the pan. So you actually want to make these little abrasions. Um, so it turns out chainmail is the perfect material because almost no matter how hard you press down on it, it's not going to um, sand your seasoning away. It's just going to create little pockets for new seasoning to, to grab onto. <laughs> and um, so that's how it became sort of a must have in our, in our field method or sort of, here's how we get this going. Here's how you get your pan going. And what do you think about with carbon buildup and chain mail? Um, so with, I know I, I recently saw you throw a pan in the fire because you <laughs> expressed that the carbon had built up beyond your ability to remove it with the uh, chain mail, I suppose. Um, my, that one is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure situation. You, if you are consistent with your chain mail, I would hope that you could prevent too much carbon from piling up. Um, or, you know, you could, there's, there's sort of like, there's different types of cast iron cookware owners. There's the person that wants to look at their product and just know that it's like, ah, that thing is perfect. And then the person is just like, I just want it to work. And so, you know, if you do get carbon buildup, you can keep chain mailing, smooth it down, kind of make sure it, it never piles up too much as well. So, right. so, so what, what I'm hearing you say is that from your experiments to try to find just that right tool, chain mail works better in your opinion than anything else that you could get your hands on. Absolutely. Yeah. And did you, did you ever consider anything else? Um, I think um, certainly open, but there's there's so many so many benefits to 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 chainmail right out of the gate that not not so much because you know you end up with a one it lasts forever two it's extremely easy to clean you know because you're cooking with oils and stuff it gets a little gunky guess what a little soap and water it's back to new um, and it's hard when you look at the lineup of abrasives it's hard to find one that that abrades without scratch, without removing, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a very unique, it's a very unique uh, application. And the fact that it works so well in the kitchen is, is like, eh, eh, honestly, it's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think I, I, I will have to agree with you on that. I, I've gone down the rabbit hole on trying the salt method and different methods on videos. I've got them, you know, in the, in our archives of YouTube videos where I just can't make anything work as well as chain mail, right? It just, it's so brilliantly simple. It just- Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I love people who want to use salt because there's something, you know, something so lovely about that to me. But at the same time, it's like, okay, now you're dumping about, what do you, you you're, you're, it's a lot of mess. And, you know, you end up needing to use water after that. And then you're, you're sort of, it's, it's, it's less, it's a less elegant solution at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, or less, it's less, it's a, not as simple, which therefore to me means it loses elegance, but um, there is something 
natural about it, I guess. It was sort of one of the original solutions that people use. So, totally. so um, you'll appreciate this story. I was hanging out with a guy the other day. We were doing some trail building in the in the woods and we were talking about chainmail specifically. And I talked to everybody about chainmail that I can. Uh, and he was like, oh, yeah, I never use chainmail because I only take my cast iron camping. And so I always just go down to the river and I uh, clean it with rocks. I'm, mm -hmm. like, I'm like, yeah, fair, fair enough. That, that yeah. makes a lot yeah. of like, yeah. like, fine, like, you know, coarse sand. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. One of my one of my buddies I was living with uh, a while back, he was like, gosh, you know what I really like this chainmail for? And he, he has all these uh, earthen jugs and he's like, I drop it in there and swirl it around. Now I don't have to put a bunch of rocks down there anymore. <laughs> yeah i do that with uh with, when i get my kids leave their smoothie containers lying around and it gets all hard that's oh, how yeah. i clean it right the only yeah. way to get in yeah. there and clean them is is you know in a mace, big mason jar with this chain metal yeah so it, it's not yeah. only just for cast iron i use it for, for everything <laughs> it's, it's it's a ridiculously useful tool yeah i, I think i have three of them over on my little sink because i'm just like eh. <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly with you and i hear that now endlessly because like you know we've you've sold tens of thousands i've sold thousands of these things out in the marketplace and people tell me all the time and because they come and buy them for friends all the time right like stocking stuffers galore it's ridiculous and because we're like people are like i use it for everything it's not just iron right they just keep it for everything so Okay, so in chainmail, so I've got the new field chainmail here. So I, I just show it here, but I'll do a, a cut up close here in the video. You'll see the difference between the old field chainmail and the new field chainmail. So chainmail ring size, what does that mean? You guys now go to a smaller and you had a bigger before. So you're now your chainmail ring size is closer to what I have as a cook culture chain size. And mm -hmm. it used to be bigger. So what's it all about? Um. Well, nuts and bolts wise, it's about having a couple of partners that help us make it. And so that's just simple uh, redundancy in our supply chain, which is really helpful. So we don't run out of it ever because it's that important that it goes with our fans. Uh, and then it's a lot of it comes down to a little bit of personal preference. So I um, I was more of a fan of the larger chain mail size. Uh, I think that might have something to do with, uh, I think you can do more sort of, I think you can get more abrasive with the larger, uh, with the larger rings. Mm -hmm. Um, but that means it also means you got to push harder. Um, so, and, and you have, and you end up with less surface contact because the rings are bigger. So I didn't mind that because I was going to just press really, really hard and move it all around and just do my thing. Um, but a smaller ring size does sort of get more to not as much elbow grease, not, not pushing as hard, better surface contact. And um, honestly, it feels better in your hand too. The smaller rings, I would say, they sort of kind of meld all around in this nice little way. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, when I got that feedback um, from my team, I, I said, well, if that's what you like and you're the ones out there selling it, then that works for me. So, yeah. so you're kind of on the fence. You're like a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. You're like, you know, does it so much matter? And you kind of like both for their own reasons? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, you know, I have, um, there's some companies that make really, the really big ring and those. I've got an example here. So yes, this is a silicone yeah. wraps with a 10 mil there. So that's a really large ring. That's a huge ring. And I, I find that it's hard to those, you really do lose a lot of surface contact with those. But again, you, what you get, what you gain is if you press really, really hard, you're going to really be able to get in there on a way that like you just, there's only so hard you can press on a small ring and and it just you know there's sort of a relationship there so yep. a big ring if you really want to get after something is nice but you know we are we are starting to split hairs here a little bit right right okay so just in general chain mail works and then you know you're getting into the nuances of which one you like better sure right all right well that's fantastic so in Giving iron, and we're at the giving season. We're making this video here at the beginning of December, the giving season. Would you recommend, if, if a friend was asking you, like, hey, you know, Steve, I'm going to buy a number eight for a friend of mine. What else should I get for them? Would you recommend to that person to give chain mail with it if they're giving it to somebody that's new to iron? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, at this point, I don't give anyone new to iron um, a pan without um, chain mail, and um and our and our seasoning oil it's just seasoning oil yeah it's just it's just too fundamental to the process 
uh, especially because, as you know, you know, these things don't the minute you cook on them, they don't look as pretty for a little while. Yeah. And and uh, and to give someone something that uh, says, don't worry about that. Just just follow these directions and, and it'll get back. Don't you worry. And that, so it's like it's kind of an imperative. And and that's also why, you know, at um, our one of our operations guy just had this brilliant idea and we now kit our number eight pans with our whole care kit with the, you know and the card comes with the field method and it says here you go if yeah. you know what you're doing don't worry about it but if you need if you want some pointers here you go here's the tools you know give us give it a give it a month or two and and i think you're going to be pretty darn happy awesome so let's just talk about the, the oil for a sec you know this i really wanted to just, you know make this video about chain mail but chain mail and seasoning they do go hand in hand so I've got the field seasoning here, and a lot of people know the cook culture seasoning. We make it here with Canadian beeswax and not American beeswax. I don't know if that's somehow better, uh, but uh, depends where your bees the, are traveling, I guess. Yeah, yeah, fair. It's just local. There's less greenhouse gas emitted. Um, so <laughs> this is what the seasoning looks like for people watching. So tell people watching, like chain mail is fundamental it makes, makes sense for maintenance for cleaning for preserving it what what do we do with the with the wax uh wax covers a few bases i mean again going on the same kind of general philosophy of making sure someone feels empowered to get going it's the wax that we create is the best chemical composition for building seasoning um it's got a high a, a high uh polymerized oil in it which you know, you can kind of tell by the word polymerize that that's like something that you want to happen to your oil when it gets on the pan, because that's what creates your coating. Um, and so we're saying you could use any number of um, any number of oils that you have on hand. Uh, if you are not sure, just take this one and it'll go. It'll this is it. This is the best. So it kind of checks that box off all the perfectionists out there like myself. So you're welcome. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the wax does a couple of things. Um, first of all, preserves the polymerized oil because polymerized oil is actually sort of naturally unstable at, you know, when it's exposed to heat and air and stuff. And so the wax gives it, uh, another six to 12 months, uh, shelf life because you're only going to be using a little bit of this at a time. Um, and then furthermore, it creates the right amount of texture so that you can apply the right amount and then it kind of it goes over goes over the pan surface nice and evenly. So and then and, and then you know you're trying to put only a little bit on. So you take your little dab of it, you put it on there, you can see that it's got perfectly, you know, covered everywhere. And it also kind of wipes up very evenly so that you're only adding just a tiny little bit. Yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I, I say to people also all the time that wax is a nice to have, not a have to have. People can get away, as you were saying, with just whatever oil, but it really makes the job simple. So simple. It just takes all the guesswork out of how you apply oil. I find a lot of people when they're when they're post-seasoning and when they're just using free pour oil, they use too much oil constantly and then they gumminess and then that just it's a slippery slope down to a bad seasoning. Yes. Yeah, it's easy to get get off track there <laughs> yeah fair enough that's awesome yeah. okay well um exciting so a lot everyone that's watching Stephen was talking to me earlier about some things that are coming down the pipeline for 2024 field that i'm not going to show you or share with you you're gonna have to wait for those things but super exciting this coming year in the cast iron world um if you want any of this product where do they find field Stephen? fieldcompany.com awesome and so, Instagram? Field company. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, put on my celebratory field hat just to stay <laughs> in brand here. That's right. Uh, and in Canada, so that's in the US. In Canada, all field products outside of the leather gloves are available at cookculture.com. So cookculture.com in Canada and field, field company? Field company. Yeah. Yeah. .com. yeah. Field okay. company. Fantastic. Com. I, uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate getting clarity around chain mail. You know, a lot of people still, you know, question if what the right thing to maintain their cast iron is and, you know, carbon steel also, this is, you know, carbon steel and cast iron. We're talking about this interchangeably, are we not? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, and honestly, chain mail may be even more important for carbon steel because it's, uh, 
slicker. It, it usually comes out, out slicker, um, harder to season. So if the more elbow grease you can put on your chain mail, I'm, I would think the better for your carbon steel. Awesome. That's great. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your time today. And I hope you have a fantastic holiday season. Sounds good, Jed. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. Okay. So thanks so much to Steven for being here. It was great to always have his words of wisdom. Uh, I've learned a lot from Steven over the years and it's been phenomenal to watch the growth of his company. It's been wonderful. So as he was saying, you know, using the chain mail on the iron surface, cast iron, carbon steel, uh, and you heard what he said about carbon steel there, that's even maybe more important because of how smooth the carbon steel is. But we're trying to, for one, we're cleaning the surface, so we're getting any carbon buildup off. And two, we're trying to leave a micro texture. So when we go and use the paste or a post seasoning oil of some sort, it has something to grab onto. So there is our reason for using chain mail and why it's so incredibly important. I'm using it all the time. So I'm going to cook up some onions here uh, really simply in a number 10 field and then I'm going to show you the post seasoning process of that and that is cleaning it first and then getting back on the onto the stove top and then using the paste to leave a beautiful seasoning layer. Okay, onions are cooked and now we've got the pan that we're going to get into the sink and we're going to use the chain mail. I'm going to show you the action I'm going to use with the chain mail. All right, so we've got kind of regular running warmish water. We've got a, a hot pan. We're going to do a little steam cleaning. A lot of, of the bits and pieces are going to come off of there. But we have on here some texture. So there's some, some bits, see it's coming right off of my finger. So we've got some things that are kind of cooked on. So we're going to get that pan here, turn off the water so you can hear what I'm saying. Bring the camera down a little bit. And I'm going to just polish that pan around. I could do this under running water also, but I'm just gonna go all around. And this seasoning is rock hard under here. So I'm just using my fingertips as you can see, but I could also just really lean into that if I wanted to. I could really go into the corners and clean this right up and make sure that when I feel this with my fingers, I got a lot of carbon coming off of there, but it's smooth. I've got no little bits and pieces and ridges. So I'm gonna keep just polishing that around and around and around and all around. You can just keep going until you have a beautifully smooth finish. You can see right here, here's an example. I've got a, a little bit of exposure here. This is the underlying seasoning. This is a carbon buildup. So the blackness and the silver underneath, the silver underneath is not like silver silver, but it's the original seasoning underneath there. And I would rather have more of that exposed than a buildup of carbon over time because that carbon will shrink and it will peel off and become garbage. There's more of this that's coming off on my hand there. Less of this and more of a smooth, nice, even surface. So around and around we go and get that as smooth. And then we rinse that off. And then what we wanna do is get that, once that's cleaned out, we're gonna take that over to the stove. I'm gonna reheat that up. I'm gonna get our seasoning paste on there. So that guy is good and clean. And so there you go. You know that you've got, doesn't, it looks like it's exposed and a lot of people will be like, oh no, I'm ruining my seasoning. This is not ruined whatsoever. Smooth and you know almost to the metal, but not quite, uh, is fine. You know, if you do end up getting a built up seasoning and you're keeping it smooth, that's great too. But what I'm trying to say here is that ridges of built on carbon and texture is not what you want. The chain mail will make sure that this keeps this smooth as possible. So to the stove top. Okay, so on the stove top, we've got it at a six, that is this out of 10, that's just above high. I've got a seasoning cloth. I've got the Cook Culture beeswax seasoning paste. 
the field is fantastic also. This is locally made here in British Columbia, Canada. There is an American made product. And I'm gonna wipe a little bit just all around. So just nice and smooth layer. I don't have a huge amount of heat going on just yet. This is warm enough to melt this all around. And I've got this on a six that I was saying. I am not looking for smoke. I do not need smoke to be coming off this. I want this to cook on. This will start to dull and not be so wet looking. It will stay shiny but go dull. And then I know that it's seasoned. I do not need to have smoke or billowing smoke or any sort of smoke coming off of this pan for that to season. And that is all I need. That can go away. And this guy is now just going to cook here for three, four, five minutes at a nice medium temperature. You can just let this cook away and harden on and that becomes a really rock hard seasoning layer. Uh, if I want to, I could do that again, but you know, one time is just perfectly fine. This will be ready to go. Okay, so thanks again for Steven for being here and talking to me about chain mail. So chain mail, the essential tool that I believe you must have for maintaining your cast iron cookware. You can get it from Field and also I sell it a, a Cook Culture made one here in Canada. So Field down in the US in Cook Culture here in Canada. I've got all the links for those at the bottom of this video. So thanks so much. See you next time.